domain of sociology. Man is always interested in experiencing social life in its various dimensions. We live in society and we are all members of a society. By way of our membership, we interact with our fellow members. This kind of interaction helps us in shaping our behavior. We all know this, but actually we have a very vague idea about this. We require a subject that studies social relationship, social behavior, man and society and it is sociology. To learn sociology is to learn social events and personal behavior. Sociology deals with social events and personal identities. Hence, sociology helps a person in changing his perspective over social life because sociology helps in recognizing the complex connection between individual needs and social institutions. Sociologists have tried to define sociology in different ways. There are many definitions for sociology to understand its specific subject matter. Some of the definitions are, according to Brown Ken, sociology is a systematic study of human groups and social life. Bennett and Tumey explain sociology as the science of the structure and function of social life. For McEver and Page, sociology is about social relationship, a network of social relationship which we call society. The meaning of sociology is very important to know. The etymological meaning of sociology is science of society. A French essayist by name Emmanuel Joseph Sayers has coined this term sociology. Social is the root word which means society or companion. Logos means science. August Comte first used the term sociology to refer to this subject, but he first used the term social physics, but later on he gave up the term because he thought the term social physics is not very much appropriate to refer to the subject sociology. Talking about the history of sociology, Sociology developed as a subject in late 19th and early 20th century in the United States of America. At that time, sociologists were very much concerned with the disorganization of family and they wanted to study this kind of disorganization in order to reorganize the familial life. Later on, in Chicago, the subject was introduced and it was called as School of Chicago to study sociology. But earlier to this, even during the French Revolution and the uh, Industrial Revolution, people started taking interest in the social life and in the social problems of the then existed society. So they studied the causes of social issues in a systematic manner and tried to give solutions to it. But later on in 1930, at the time of uh, Great Depression, the government employed a number of sociologists to study scientifically 
the causes for social problems and they try to remove social distress. Therefore, sociology always seeks to analyze and explain social events and why and how people interact in a particular fashion and why social problems arise in the society. It's very important to know the explanations of concepts that are used in sociology very frequently. There are many concepts. Let us see some of the concepts that are very frequently used in sociology. The most important concept in sociology, the students come across social interaction. What is social interaction? Interaction is exchange of ideas and message between persons. When this exchange takes place in a social context between a person and the group, we call it as social interaction. Social interaction consists of two or more individuals purposefully relate to each other. There are three types of interaction. One is person to person, the second one is person to group and the third one is group to group. At every point of our life we interact either with the group or with individuals and this interaction is very important for us to shape our behavior in our social life. All interactions take place in society. Now it's important to know what we mean by society. A society consists of an organized and interdependent group of individuals who live together in a specific geographic area in which the members cooperate and share common culture over a time. Now I use the term group. What do we understand by group? Within society, people lead their lives in groups with specific identity. Groups are two or more people who interact with each other because of shared common interests or needs. One of the important social institutions is family. Family is the core social institution that helps in the perpetuation of society. What is family then? Family is an institution in which a man and a woman cohabit and bear children with the permission of the society and they form the family according to the norms of the society. Uh, so family is considered to be an important institution in social life. But due to the changes that have taken place in the external culture, the structure of family and the functions that are performed by family keep on changing from time to time. It is mainly due to, due to the changing culture. What is culture then? Culture is the way of life shared by a group of people. It consists of knowledge, beliefs, values, rules, languages, customs, symbols and material products within a society that fulfill human needs. Since culture prescribes the ways of life to human beings, the institutions function properly in the society. What is social institution? Social institutions provide rules, roles and relationships and control human behavior. Only through institutions, organized social activities take place. Society consists of many institutions. Some of the institutions are family, education, religion and state. Family is considered to be an institution because the method of selecting your life partner and how we are going to form your family 
how we are going to conduct the family life are already prescribed by the culture and one is expected to follow these norms. In the case of education, the system has to adopt a method of selecting the candidates to the schools, the way of conducting examination, the way of passing out examination and the results are governed by certain sets of rules and regulations and the school is expected to follow them. In the case of religion also, the moral code is already prescribed. We have to follow a number of prescriptions and proscriptions and therefore we call religion as an institution. In the case of government, there are many policies to be formulated by the government and how the government should formulate, how the government itself should be formed, all these factors are governed by certain set of rules and regulations and therefore we consider all these institutions as important institutions of society. These are some of the important concepts we come across in sociology but there are many more concepts we have to understand which we will see later on. There is always a criticism against sociology whether it could be considered as a science or not. Certain explanations could be given on this. Early thinkers like Plato and Aristotle were great thinkers. They traveled widely throughout the world to different places and with the help of their mental ability and observation they were able to generalize many things regarding society and human behavior. They contributed a lot to understand social life. But one thing we have to accept is that they cannot produce any numerical data and their generalizations were not derived upon any scientific approach. But still, they contributed a lot in our understanding. Sociology similarly has a very strong background as far as theory is concerned. And we could make a lot of theoretical correlations which are also scientific. Talking about natural sciences and making a big comparison with social sciences is not possible because in natural sciences experiments could be conducted in laboratory and the subjects could be taken into the lab and many interventions could be made. But in the case of society which consists of human beings such laboratory tests are not possible. At this point let us see the difference between natural sciences and social sciences and understand why experiments are not possible in social sciences as in the case of natural sciences. Experiments could be conducted to test and prove ideas is possible. The experiments are conducted in material objects that do not get affected by the presence of the scientists. Accuracy and predictions are possible in natural sciences. Natural sciences find out the causal relationship between factors. Sociology Conducting experiments on human beings by creating artificial setting is not possible. In the case of sociology, human behavior is influenced by many social factors that surround them. Human behavior is unpredictable. Even under similar situations, a man might present a different reaction depending on his mood. Social sciences are interpretive. Therefore, we understand that experimentation, accuracy and predictions are limited in sociology. But still, sociology could be considered as a science because of the following reasons. Sociology has developed 
systematic research methods to collect information in an organized and planned method. Sociologists also present evidences to prove a fact. Explanations and conclusions are drawn from evidences. Sociological findings could also be checked, verified and are subject to criticism. In the case of sociology, the whole world is the laboratory and the subjects are human beings. That is the difference between natural science and social science. But in the case of natural science, the subjects are non-living things. But in sociology, the subjects are living things controlled by their feelings and moods. And therefore, their behaviors cannot be predicted. But one thing that is great about sociology is that sociology has a very rich theoretical background that provides us correlation between various factors that uh, are presented in the social life. For example, the theory of suicide and also Max Weber's The Spirit of Capitalism and the Protestant Ethics. These theories have presented a lot of materials regarding human behavior and social events. And therefore, we feel that sociology could also be considered as a good science. The frequent criticism that sociology cannot generalize is not accepted by Ginsburg. Ginsburg gives six types of generalization in social sciences like empirical correlation. Robert Bierstedt in his book Social Order has given five types of characteristic features for sociology. They are sociology is a social science and not a natural science. Sociology is a positive and not a normal science. Sociology is a pure or theoretical science and not an applied science. Sociology is a generalizing science and not a particularizing one. Sociology is both rational and an empirical science. The knowledge in sociology is very much useful to society. It could be used in different ways. Now we will see the uses of sociology in social life. Sociology helps in solving social problems. Social research brings out underlying causes for social events. Social knowledge influences evolving public policies usefully. Government policies and programs based on social research will yield good results. Knowledge in interpersonal relationship helps in the treatment of mental health. Public relational activities could be improved by gaining sociological knowledge. Sociology makes individuals understand social and cultural relationships better. Hence, it benefits both individual and society. Sociology encourages full understanding of social situations. Sociology helps people in evaluating social problems, views it scientifically and unbiased to sort out a solution. Sociology studies cultures in their diversity and understands its influence on human behavior. Sociology aids in collecting information systematically and frame social welfare programs and ways to implement them successfully. Sociology provides ways to assess consequences of social events. Sociology is useful in developing skills in interpersonal relationships. Sometimes people develop ideas by superficial knowledge and experience without questioning the actual event of it. On the face value, it looks sensible. When we make an examination, it may not be true. And this kind of superficial experience and generalization is called common sense knowledge. 
but in the case of sociology people think that they know everything about social events but it is not so sociology derives everything every conclusion every generalization on the basis of systematic information and this is the difference between sociology sociological knowledge and common sense understanding sociologists are expected not to be influenced by their own feelings and their own likings of a particular event or a group or incident when they make a study of social problems they are expected to keep themselves away from the situation and view the situation only as a researcher without getting any bias for instance a female researcher going to the field to study the issues of uh, women might be influenced by her own feelings because she is also a woman in this case this girl is expected to be unbiased that is she should not be influenced by her own feelings and attachment to her own gender she must keep herself away from the actual situation and view the situation only as a researcher the career opportunities for sociologists are plenty both in government and non government organizations not only for the sake of career but sociological knowledge helps a person develop his personality perfectly and helps him to be a good citizen of the society so far we have explained the subject matter of sociology and some of the basic concepts in sociology and why we can consider sociology as a science for the sake of better understanding of sociology i am posing you a few questions one bring up the difference between sociology and natural sciences two why do we consider sociology as a science three is generalization possible in sociology four what are the characteristic features of sociology according to robert beerstein